Hello, my name is Thomas Turley and I'm a culinary lecturer at South East Regional College and I'm here along with my uh, colleague. Uh, I'm Brian McGill, also a culinary lecturer at South East Regional College and we're here today to do a masterclass on stoning, browning and burnt. Uh, this is part of the hot pot egg version that we're going on. So we're going to get started here and we're going to hand straight over to Thomas who's going to show us how to do the classic hot pot egg okay on a chicken. Okay, so we're going to do a, a quick demo on how to prepare a chicken cut for sauté. Um, we're going to break it into eight pieces and I'm going to show you how, how to start uh, jointing the chicken first of all. Okay, so first of all I'm going to take the wings off. And then I'm going to remove the legs. So I'm just breaking the skin gently here. I'm just pushing it back, if you can see, and then this sort of little sort of knuckle comes through there. See, we're not, we're not going to cut through any bone at any stage at all. What we're doing is we're gently cutting through each joint. Okay, so that's two legs removed. And now I'm going to take off the, the Supremes, okay? So we're going to take off two small Supremes. And again, cutting through the, cutting around the, the carcass and through the supreme bone. And then again, the next one. So you shouldn't really hear your knife cutting against any bone. And then we're going to take off the piece of um, breast meat on the carcass. So this is the only time you will ever cut through any bone. So we're cutting through the rib cage, and we're using a large, sharp chef's knife. I'm going to uh, separate the drumstick and the thigh. So when you're doing this part, you'll uh, cut through the little white sort of fatty sort of line there. That's your guide for separating the drumstick and the thigh. And again, there's never cutting through any bone. It's cutting through the natural joint. So you're just checking. So you move it back and forward and just cut through the natural sort of cartilage. So we have one thigh and one drumstick. And we're just doing the exact same thing again. So cutting through that little white sort of fatty line and finding where the joint is. Okay, so, so at this stage we have two thighs, we have two drumsticks, we have two small two uh, chicken wings and two supremes. So I'm gonna do a little bit of cleaning up first of the of the uh, the poultry. So I'm going to hold this sort of skin tight and sort of cut around the bottom of the drumstick. So it's just to release it and then start scraping through the bone and you're cutting through the sinew. So when this cooks, it'll shrink up and you'll have a nice clean drumstick. I'm then just going to take the knuckle off the end. Okay, so. So we're doing it nice and gently to prevent any kind of splintering. Just push that back up a wee bit. And then trim this wee bit of fat off. And the same again with this one. So cut around the drumstick and then scrape it up. And then trim off the knuckle again. So it should come off nice and clean with no splinters. That's the second one done. The thighs are fine the way they are. Uh, the chicken supremes, and so the little supremes are going to just trim it back up again. So trim off any sort of excess fat. And then we're going to clean the supreme bone. 
by removing any excess sort of meat or skin on it. And then give it a little scrape. And again, just gently take the knuckle off again. So that's one sort of mini Supreme. I'm gonna pop that down here. And again, we're doing this exact same thing again. And then again, just removing off the excess skin and uh, flesh off the Supreme bone. So this is quite a quick thing to do once you know what you're doing. Once you understand the, the jointing of the chicken, then you can quickly get through it. I'm gonna trim it off a wee bit cleaner to the, the bone. Okay, so you have two nice uh, mini Supremes, two thighs, two drumsticks, two wings, and then two pieces of breast on the bone. So I'm gonna use my large knife for this. And then just sort of give it a good tap. <clears throat> I'm just tidying it up a little bit. And then with the last piece you have is the carcass. I'm just gonna quickly take the excess skin off it and we're gonna cut it into three for to make some nice fresh chicken stock. Just remove any kind of fat on it, any fat and skin. That means your stock will not be greasy. And then that's your chicken cut for saute. So it's cut into eight pieces. So you have two, 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 and two. The wings can be used for stock, or you can also make them into little uh, lollipops. And then the, the, the carcass will be used for stock. So the chicken uh, cut for saute will also be uh, brown meat and white meat. So you'll have four pieces of brown meat and four pieces of white meat. So that's it. Thank you.
Now I'm going to show you how to prepare a whole turkey in the different sort of um, styles. So we're starting with the whole turkey, so a very common turkey at Christmas time. I'm going to take the legs off, the wings off, and remove the breast as well. And I'll show you different things while we're going through it. So first of all, again, so it's just like a, a larger version of a chicken. We're going to go through the exact same way and the, the exact same joints as well of the turkey. So first of all, we're going to remove the wings. So it's the first wing off there. And I'm using a, a, a thin bone knife, just so I don't damage the, the meat at all. So again, let me see. So I'm finding out where the joint is and cutting through the joint. So again, just going in there. So second wing off. Then we're gonna remove the legs. So again, like a chicken, you're gonna break the skin first of all. With it being a larger bird, you sort of need a wee bit more effort. So breaking the skin and pushing the leg back just the way we do with a chicken. So just and then cut around. Push it back till you see the knuckle come through. And then just cut around it then. So that's our first leg off. And again the, the exact same way. So breaking the skin and cutting around behind the knuckle. And pushing it back until you see it popping through. So you'll see this little knuckle popping through there. And then cutting around behind it. Okay, so this becomes a crown. So that'll be your crown of turkey you would get at Christmas time. So you can roast that in the oven, you can put a little bit of butter under the skin, season it. But we're not gonna do that. We're gonna take the, the actual uh, turkey breast off. So again, running down the middle of the turkey and taking one side off. So one right down the middle. And then just gently, sort of using your knife, just remove it from the, the rib cage. So you're going as close as you can to it. And that's our first turkey breast off. And the exact same thing again on the other side. Cut them right down. And then just removing it off the rib case nice and gently. So you have then your two turkey breasts off. Then again, you can cut the crown or cut the carcass. Just take a larger knife this time. So you're gonna cut the carcass down and break it off. I'm just removing the fat again because we're gonna use this for our turkey gravy. We're gonna roast it off in the oven. So removing the skin Using my small knife again because we don't want to have greasy gravy. And then taking, removing a little parson's nose as well. And that's your carcass then, so you can use that for your roast in the oven with a few uh, carrots, onions, garlic, thyme, and that'll be the start of your gravy. Okay. So what we're going to do now is the, a turkey uh, ballantine. So it's the same as the chicken. I'm just going to give a bench a little wipe first of all. And again, so just boning out the turkey leg. And what it sort of is, it's sort of like in an L shape, I sort of, sort of try to go for. So the leg will go down that way and across that way. So we're making a little incision this way here until we can sort of expose the bone. And then again across this bone here, the thigh bone. And just rub your knife until you can actually see the bones you're scraping against it and it exposes it for you. Then we're gonna go in behind the thigh bone. So nice and close to the, the bone so we're not wasting any meat. 
and pop your knife underneath it and then just release it. So it's the thigh, just scrape that excess meat off so there's no wastage. So this is a very easy way to use up the turkey leg. Lots of people don't really like the brown meat or the turkey leg because it's quite muscly and chewy, but if we do it this way, everything gets used up. So again, pop your knife underneath. So this is underneath the drumstick bone this time. And scraping it all down then. So then the, this part is a little tricky bit. So you're cutting around the, the little joint where the thigh bone meets the drumstick bone. And we're just gonna try and release it. So just take your time and remove it nice and gently. So you're just gonna run a little knuckle part here. And sometimes it will leave a little bit of cartilage. So we're just gonna check and take that off. Okay, so that is the bone removed. So we're gonna use that for stock as well. So that can go in with your uh, carcass. And then we're left then with a nice uh, turkey leg boned out. So I'm gonna remove this little bit of sort of like tough cartilage you can feel here. I'm gonna check it's all nicely removed. So for the Ballantine, so it's just a turkey leg that's been boned out. So I'm gonna trim some of the meat off to sort of push in another little area that maybe has no meat. And I'm also gonna remove some of the sinews. So they have little like sort of tough sinews because a turkey will be running around and it will build up muscle in its leg, not like a chicken. So we have to remove these sort of like tougher pieces of sinew first. Okay, so take that out there. So these are tougher pieces. We're not gonna roast these, we're just gonna remove them. And a little piece here. Okay. So that's our piece of, uh, so that's our turkey leg boned out. So what we would normally do is bat it out. So you could use like a wooden, uh, like a rolling pin or a, a metal batten to batten it out. Um, so what I'm gonna do, first of all, is season it. And I'm gonna show you how to roll it up then. Okay, so we've got a little bit of salt and pepper. I'm gonna put a little bit of salt and pepper on it first. Some pepper. And then we're gonna roll it up into the Ballantine shape. So I'm gonna use some cling film for this part. So lift this over here. And then I'm gonna get some cling film. We're gonna pop our cling film down and then pop our turkey leg on. And then we're just gonna roll it up. So you can stuff it at this stage. You can stuff it with um, a nice cranberry stuffing. You can also stuff it with uh, just a nice sort of vet, like breadcrumb, sage and onion garlic, or even just make a, like a, a turkey mousse. So you can use some of the leg trim. You can trim some of the meat out and put it in a blender with some um, seasoning, a little bit of egg white, a little bit of cream, and just make it into a nice light turkey mousse and then put some maybe flavors in it then, some nuts or fruit, dried fruit in it. And then you place it in this and you can roll it up. So I'm just gonna show you how I would roll it. Okay, so we're just gonna roll it in the balancing. So you start off by rolling it into a nice shape. So you're getting into like a sort of a, a turkey sausage sort of type of shape. And I'm just gonna bring the cling film back and sort of then roll it like this. So you're rolling it and then pushing the air out and then rolling and pushing the air out we're gonna do this maybe about five or six times. I'm gonna stop and put that there. And then what we're gonna do now is just tie it then. So I'm just sort of tightening it first. I'm gonna get my hands a little wash. So you're gonna tie it in a little knot. and then tie it at the other side in a little knot. Okay, so it's a little bit tricky just trying to get the knot through here. Give me 
you two seconds. So that's it that you have. So you have a, the turkey legs sort of boned out, rolling cling film to, to shape. You can pop it in the fridge overnight. The next day you can uh, poach it or steam it, or else wrap it in tin foil and just roast it straight in the oven with the turkey breast. So that's the, the Ballantine. I want to then show you how you can just separate the turkey leg. If you don't want to go to all that hassle, you can just separate it. So it's again just like the chicken leg. So removing any sort of excess sort of fat on it there and again cutting through this sort of nicely we sort of fatty line here will sort of let you know that's the jump stick in the thigh so i'm just finding a little joint here so it's the turkey drumstick just trim around the bottom again so when it cooks it releases and sort of makes a nice little sort of shape so I'm just releasing all this, the sinew and the tendons around this end. So that's your turkey drumstick. And then the thigh, that can be a, just your turkey thigh that way, but you can also take the thigh bone out, which would probably be easier. So you can take the thigh bone out quite easy, scraping the bone so there's no waste. Removing the thigh bone by popping your knife underneath. And then that's your, that can go in the stock, your thigh bone. This is your thigh then. So the thigh can also be used for like a turkey, like you get chicken olives or turkey olives. It's another name. You just stuff it with some nice stuff. And so you would sort of, just sort of butter flat out a little bit. What I'm doing with the meat is getting the thickest part of the meat and slicing it open. And then you have a little bit of seasoning. So salt and pepper, place your stuffing in, and then you can roll it up this way. And then put maybe a little cocktail stick through there and that'll be your turkey thigh. Nicely stuffed. So this is all ready for the oven. So you have your breast, you can pop like maybe a little bit of butter underneath, season and maybe put some rashed bacon over the top of it. And that's ready for the oven as well. So you could have a roasted turkey breast, you could have a roasted chicken valentine, or you could have a roasted turkey thigh or a drumstick. Thank you.
Now we're going to talk a little bit about brining. Now, we're using the brining in, in the, in the uh, process of doing poultry today, but this can be put across the most meats uh, and most poultry. So it can be, it be used across a lot of, of different variants. So first one we're going to talk about is a wet brine. Okay, so this wet brine, all we've really done here, and uh, uh, there will be recipes posted up because if I went through all the ingredients with everything, we'll be here all day. Okay, so our wet brine, basic 150 grams of sugar, 150 grams of sea salt, litre of water, bring your water to the boil, put your sugar and salt in, um, once it's dissolved, take it off the boil, and then cool it down straight away with a bag of ice. Just the ice straight into it, and that helps cool it down. So you don't have to wait about donkeys for it to cool down to use it. Okay, so it's actually about two litres of water you're using, but boil one, put in a bag of ice, that brings the temperature down. Now, everybody has their own variants on it, and this is where you need to experiment. You experiment yourself and see what flavours that you like to impart into it. Now, with this one, what I've done there is I put some bay leaves in it. I have put some black cardamoms, because I love black cardamoms, um, some cloves, a wee bit of star anise, cinnamon stick, and some thyme, okay? Brought that to the boil, infused it, put my ice in, leave that to cool, okay? Now, if we're brining poultry in it, what we would do, we put the poultry in and leave it for about 12 to 24 hours. Obviously, I've done a lot of that yesterday, so I've just saved some of this for us today to show you it. Um, at least 12 hours, okay? Now, what that'll help to do, it'll help to keep the moisture in, okay? When you cook, it would be less forgiving. You get nice, moist um, poultry. Um, it also helps to empower flavour in it, and that's why I say, mess about with it. I mean, you put a bit of lemon zest in there, whatever. Whatever you think, and what you think about the finished dish as well, what well, actually goes with the finished dish, and you can help put those flavours in, and marinate those flavours in earlier. Say, 24 hours is, is a good time to have it in. We're now going to move on to, it's more like a dry brine, like a, like a cure. Yet again, salt, sugar, um, I have cinnamon in there, celery salt in there, um, cloves in there, star anise in there. there. There's loads of ingredients. Fresh thyme, fresh rosemary, okay? It works on the same basis when you're doing your comfrey duck. So when you do your comfrey duck, you normally get your rosemary, your thyme, and your salt blended together. Rub that on the duck, let it sit for 24 hours, wash it off, and then comfrey your duck. Okay? So it works on those same basis, but I wish I had like smell of it in here because the smell of this, it, it, it's astronomical. It really does, and it purrs so much flavor. Thing you have to remember, if you're using this for the likes of steak, seasoning the steak, don't salt it again, okay? If, you, if you're using this as your marinade, don't, don't, because there's enough flavour comes out of that. Um, what I would do, I would use this quite a bit with turkey. Um, so I will show you how to do it with turkey today. But the turkey breast, dust my cling, fill in with that, wrap it, leave it for 24 hours, take it out, give it a wee wash off, and then roast it, and the flavour is astronomical. But it also helps to seal in the moisture. So you're adding flavour, you're sealing in the moisture, you're making it, a lot of you an unforgiving. You're being a better experience for the customer as well. And these are things you can mess about with. What you have to do is follow the sugar-salt ratios because the sugar and the salt ratios are the things that seal in those, those, those moisture. Okay, they seal in the moisture. Um, the rest of it is just extra flavour. So that's where you can start messing about. You Use your, your chef knowledge. Um, have fun. And, and that's what it's about. Okay, so... That's our brines. Um, we sort of talked a bit about them, say, a good 24 hours, but 12 hours will do. Okay? Um, what we're going to do now, we're going to set these to side, and we're going to start making some, some recipes using the techniques um, and the skills that we've already shown you, and showing you how you can use those to move your business forward and maybe uh, put something different on your menu. Okay? So we'll be back very shortly with some recipes.
So, um, so now I'm going to do a little sort of uh, chicken dish with some tarragon reduction and fondant potato and some buttered asparagus. So I'm just going to quickly show you how to sort of how you always seal this sort of chicken first, okay? So we've got a chicken breast here. And I'm going to just quickly salt and pepper it. So again, a little bit of pepper again, freshly ground pepper, and that's what it's all. Then I've got a sort of a hot pan already on, so a non-stick pan. I'm going to just take it off here for a second. And then I'm going to place the chicken supreme, so it has a little supreme bone on it, and no skin, just a little bit healthier. I'm going to just place the chicken into it. I'm going to use that in a bit, so I'm just going to wash my hand for a second. So the chicken, what we're doing is sealing the chicken. So we're not fully cooking it, we're just sealing the chicken um, on both sides to give it a little bit of golden colour. Then pop it on a wee tray and into the oven to cook it through so it's completely cooked out then. So I'm going to have a little check first. So we want to get a nice wee bit of colour now. And then the rest of the colour is going to happen in the oven. So the trick is a nice hot pan and don't push it around, don't do nothing, just let it sit and colour. So I still use the metaphor, just let it sun pan. Let it sit and not get any colour. Let it sit and sort of do its own thing. Okay, I'm going to turn it over now and seal it on the other side. And then I'm just going to keep all around it just to see the juice is in. Okay. And that's it, it's ready. So it's ready for the oven now, so I'm going to just pop it into a little oven over here. Okay, so that should take, so the chicken and the oven should take around about sort of 12 to 15 minutes, depending on the size of the chicken breast. Small breast probably about 10 minutes, large breast about 15. But we don't want to overcook it either, we're just going to cook it until it's uh, completely safety, and then let it rest for a little minute. Okay, so now we're on to making the sauce. So for the sauce, um, we're going to use the same pan that we cooked the chicken breast in, so a little bit of flavour in there from the sediment that's come off the chicken breast. So the pan's nice and sort of warm, we don't want it too hot. And the first thing we're going to do is add some finely diced shallot and garlic that we have here. I'm just going to pop that out. I'm just going to let that gently sort of sweat. Okay, so you're not looking at any colour, you're just looking at the soften down. And it's sucking in all the sort of chicken flavours and juices that was in the pan already. The next thing we're going to do is add a little bit of white wine to it. And again, it's on a high heat, so we're letting that reduce. So we're, having, we're making a natural reduction sauce. Instead of a heavier sort of flour-based sauce, we're making a nice uh, wine reduced sauce. So a little bit more wine. And again, letting the reduction happen. So we need to let the reduction happen. Otherwise, you'll, not, you'll get like sort of a winey flavored sauce. This is going to reduce a lot of the, the winey flavor off it. Okay, so you can see the wine's really almost reduced, it's sucked up by the shallot. Now we're going to mix, now we're going to add some uh, nice fresh chicken stock. So this is the base to a very basic simple sauce. It's always the same sort of uh, uh, method. It's sweating off your um, aromas, your shallot, garlic, whatever else you want to put in there. Then you're going to add some wine and then you'll add a little bit of chicken stock. And we've already got a really nice base of our sauce. And then we're going to add some double cream then. So we have some nice heavy cream. It's important you must use double cream because it can boil. You can cook with double cream, but with whipping cream or single cream, it'll split on you. So I'm going to add a nice bit of cream. A little bit more. A little bit more. And that's it. We're just going to let that reduce now until it's a nice... Um, just cream thick and sauce, so you don't want to over reduce it, you want it just like coat in the back of a spoon, or just like a nice saucy consistency. So I'm going to maybe turn the heat down a little bit, because we've already reduced the stock in the white wine, so it's just the cream now, just creating a nice lovely sauce. So to garnish this dish, we have some lovely fondant potatoes and some uh, new seasoned asparagus. That has already been pre-cooked, so the potatoes have been cooked in a little bit of stock in the oven and butter. The asparagus have been blanched, and all we're going to do is warm it up with a little bit of butter again. And everything's going to come together very quickly now. So I'm just going to check my sauce for seasoning. So 
Yeah, so it needs a little bit of salt and a little bit of pepper. So a little bit of pepper first. And then a little bit of salt. So not too much salt, you don't want to over reduce it. Uh, the, usually the common fault would be adding too much salt and then the sauce reduces and it gets too salty and you can't do nothing about it. So we're going to heat my, my dish up first as well. Okay, I'm going to knock it back with a tiny bit more stock. So it's all about sort of like knowing what you're doing. It's all about sort of like using your judgment. Is the sauce too thick? Is it too thin? If it's too thin, you let it reduce on a higher heat. If it's too thick, you'll knock it back a little bit more chicken stock or cream. So that's a good consistency there, I would say. I'm then going to add some um, brown cap mushrooms. And we're going to slice some and also leave some quartered as well. You can use any kind of mushroom, really. And just pop them in because mushrooms are just really water so they cook in seconds. I'm going to add some quartered mushrooms as well and again let that cook. Knock about again another wee bit of stock. Okay and then I'm going to add some uh, freshly shaved tarragon so we're not going to mush it we're just going to shave it so it's nice and bright green and it's nice fresh tarragon flavor as well. So just pop it in there. And then we're gonna finish with some chives, some freshly shaved chives as well. That can all go in there. Okay, so now we're ready to plate. I'm gonna grab a nice chicken breast I cooked just about five minutes ago. So just so it's nicely rested, it's fully cooked, it's nicely rested and it's ready to serve now. Um, okay, so we're gonna do a little bit of plating up. So. The sauce is perfect, so I'm just going to take it off for a little minute. So first of all, I'm going to put a little bit of potato in the center, or in the side. And we're going to arrange it in maybe threes. A little bit of asparagus coming off the side. So it's really just for um, different shapes and um, design of the plate. And then I'm going to just pop the chicken breast in the center. It's a nice, lovely chicken breast. This mark is up there. And then just tasting the sauce before it goes on. So it's really important before anything goes on the plate. We're going to just have a final wee taste of it. That's very nice, but we're just going to a tiny bit more salt and pepper. And another wee taste. And that's just ready to go. So I'm just finishing the dish with some nice, some nice sauce of mushrooms, tarragon, shallot, white wine, chicken stock. And that's that dish ready. Thank you. So now we're going to make a nice uh, chicken stir fry. So this is a very quick dish. I can have this done maybe about two to three minutes real time because every, we have everything pre uh, prepped for us on the tray here. And it's really just a matter of like quickly flash frying a little bit of sort of uh, prep chicken leg meat and a wee bit of breast. So the first thing we have here is um, some chicken leg meat and breast. I'm just going to quickly season it. So a lovely bit of salt and pepper. And while that's happening, I've got a nice hot wok on here. So it's a non-stick wok that's been nicely oiled. And that's only just a tiny bit of, tiny bit of oil in, and then we're gonna just pop the chicken in. I'm just gonna give it a quick shake with the tongs. And that's just set for a minute. We're just trying to get a wee edge on it, a little bit of sort of color as well. But again, this will cook in one to two minutes. Very thinly sliced chicken. And we're just gonna mix it with some lovely veg. So we'll have some lovely noodles. Um, some colourful peppers, spring onions, red onion, asparagus, carrot, a little bit of pineapple, some sweet chilli sauce, some honey and uh, soy, and we'll finish it with some nice Michael Crest and sesame seeds. So a nice bit of colour on your chicken. And give it a wee quick stir fry. So 
was good to have a wok then, so a wok will give you the chance to be able to shake everything together in the bowl. Instead of a frying pan, you would have to stir it, so. Okay. Okay, so that's that started. Next thing we're gonna put in is maybe the, the firmer veg. So we have peppers, asparagus, carrots. Everything is cut quite thin. That's the important factor when making a stir fry. Everything needs to be cut thin so that you can actually stir fry it in a matter of minutes. Okay. We've got some lovely colors going on there. The chicken's cooking, the veg is warming through. I'm now gonna then add some noodles to it as well. So just some lovely egg noodles. So they've already been pre-cooked. And again, just stirring that in. A little bit more seasoning. The veg is mainly 90% water, so it's really important we get a good bit of seasoning. Okay, and maybe a touch more oil. Okay, so there we are. We're gonna finish with a little bit of just fresh pineapple. Just makes it, gives that nicely sort of lighter touch to it. And then I'm gonna now add some sweet chili sauce, just your normal sweet chili sauce you'll get from any supermarket, the Asian supermarket. Give that another wee stir. So again, it's only maybe taking us a minute or two. Just bringing out everything together. I'm now gonna give it a little bit of soy and honey dressing. I'm gonna add all that in. So while that's finishing, just gonna warm a bowl up for a few seconds. And then we're ready to plate. So just give my wee area down a little white. Got a nice underplate for my stir fry. And that's just ready. Okay, so the china just takes a few seconds because it's quite expensive china and you don't wanna crack it or break it. So now it's just a matter of building up in your bowl. So we have, we're gonna start with the noodles and keep it maybe in the center and just keep piling on top. So this is a great dish if you're just in from work. You can't be bothered cooking a whole meal. You can buy your veg already pre-cut. And it's just bring it together in the pan. Okay. And now we're just gonna finish it with um, a few sesame seeds. And look at that, that's beautiful. And some nice micro herbs. Just for a bit of greenery and a wee bit of sort of fresh herb flavor at the end. A bit of lightness, some nice chives as well. And then we also have a little bit of curry oil, so this is a wee bit chefy. So just to finish it off, a nice wee bit of like drizzle of fresh curry oil. And a little bit of coriander oil. Just to give it a wee bit of spice. And that's just finished. So as we come to a close on our master class of birds, brining and boning, I just want to take this opportunity to thank you from all the team at Cirque and the hospitality and catering department for tuning in and hopefully you've picked up a different skill. And I just like to think that you got maybe we'll give you some inspiration um, and give you a bit more knowledge and something you can take away with you, use in the future and build on and build on for your, for your own menus and your own development. Thank you very much. Thank you.